Welcome to Valley Spotlight and happy Sunday, everybody. We always appreciate you being here with us. Yeah, good afternoon. We have a great show for you today and in, in the middle of the summertime. Other people are taking the summers off. Right, not Mike and Lauren. No, no. Why, why don't we? <laughs> we probably should. Because then no, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to tell all no, these great stories. No, we wouldn't stories. be able to. And we have a jam-packed show for you today. I'm not sure if an hour is enough time. But we're going to try. We're going to do our best. We're going to try. Let's give you a rundown of what we have uh, for you today. First, I get to go. I've never been inside a food truck. Me either. Well, you still haven't, right? I was going to say, I haven't. But you did get to hang out with Mark Canzanetta in a food truck, you lucky dog. <laughs> he uh, has access to a food <laughs> truck. So now he's bringing the food to you, which is even better. Uh, so if you go to the new uh, concert arena outside the Youngstown Amphitheater there, uh, at, during so select events. Mm -hmm. He'll be there and you can walk up and enjoy this new foray of his and it's a little different this time. Right, Oaxaca. Oaxaca. very familiar with the word Oaxaca and all the great tacos and so many great things that he has. Kelly Warren and I, we get to hang out on a boat and we invited you to. Right. So. Do you believe in uh, UFOs? Can I say that I do? Okay. I just feel like the world is really, of really big. Yeah, the universe. Yes, it's really, really the world big. and the universe, yes. So uh, we're going to talk about a man who uh, wrote two books on that subject. I can't wait to see this one. And mm -hmm. I get to uh, go to a place called Winter Aviation. All right, let's start with that. And that's where we begin today. And for so many of us here in the Valley, uh, changes and transitions, sometimes they can be a bit scary. But at Winter Aviation, uh, this company is going to be going to new levels and new heights because of a new way of thinking. So take a look at the company that we all have known and loved for many, many years and where they're going next. There's just something romantic about it. Taking off into the sky, eye to eye with the world. It takes vision. And for Winter Aviation, they are focusing on maintenance and safety their vision for the future. I've been here less than nine months. Um, there were four divisions when I came and now there are two, but we are getting ready to start a new one. So we had a charter flight division and it's just a little difficult in this area, in this market. And um, it wasn't making money. It, and it was a very tough decision because everybody involved is extremely passionate about that one. So with private jet service being on hold at Winter Aviation, it does not mean that the people who consider it home are not busy. Winter Aviation has been ruling the skies for decades, and they are still upholding a level of service that has stood the test of time. This highly specialized team is highly sought after when it comes to aviation maintenance. Safety is our number one priority. The skills demand an appreciation for the industry and how truly remarkable taking flight is. Tom Law looked at the opportunity at Winter Aviation as a way to soar, and so does the team he helps manage. We're all certified mechanics here. Any, anybody can't just come work on an airplane, you have to go to school for it and get, get a license from the, from the government, and you maintain currency in that too. So everybody here has got their FAA certification, it's called an airframe, airframe power plant certificate. Uh, we maintain the highest standards per the FAA, per the government. His role and skill set is helping fuel the evolution of what Winter Aviation is becoming. They will have three divisions that cover ground handling, maintenance, and avionics. Meg Bianco, a Liberty native, made the decision to join professional forces with Rick Hale, a longtime friend. Rick's love for his company and the industry run deep. And I started out sweeping floors in this hangar right here as a 19-year-old trying to break into aviation. Years later, Rick is still finding ways to help push winter aviation forward, and now Meg is here to help guide the way. The reason why she's here, she has a skill set that this company needed to make the transition I'm looking for. So uh, she uh, agreed to come on board and we've been restructuring ever since and uh, the future's looking brighter all the time. Her mindset and approach to guiding this company into the future is already helping to evoke excitement in new ways. From her perspective, the horizon is bright. The way I always see things is, if one door closes, there's at least two or three that have an opportunity to open up and take us into the future in a bigger way. 
And a big thank you to everybody at Winter Aviation for inviting us out there. And for those of you who might think that it's just Winter Aviation here in Youngstown, Michael, they have different ground crews that they oversee all over the country. So mm. it's not just the facility here, it's people all over the country. And we're just glad to have them still centrally located right here at the Youngstown Air Reserve Base and the airport and yeah. all of that together. So it's That's what the good stuff. companies do. They yeah. evolve, they get better, they, they streamline, and they look into the future. They're not thinking about today, they're thinking about years down the road, and that's what they're doing there. And we like to see that very much, especially on this show. Yeah. So, you know what else we like to see on this show? What? Food. Food, and uh, <laughs> tacos aren't just for Tuesdays anymore. Mark Canzanetta has a new venture, and uh, he's gonna bring some delicious Mexican food your way, and we're gonna see it up close and personal after this break. Kenny, what are you guys doing at the Robins? We're not running yet. Oh, we're, we're supposed, supposed to be at the end. Here's where we're supposed to be. River, River Rock, Rock at, at the Amp. Amp. The only place to be every Saturday night. River Rock at the Amp. She would always say, honey, I, you snore so loud, I, I can't believe how loud you snore. And I'm like, what? And he claims I quit breathing. I've tried four different masks to make it work, and I just can't do it. And I'll be honest with you, I did not know what REM sleep felt like, like before too. the appliance. I really right. did not. I, it, it, I never had that deep of a sleep before. The gates are open. The refreshments are cold. And the games, the action, and the evenings they're all hot at the Eastwood Field when the Mahoney Valley Scrappers heat up this summer. Log on to mvscrappers.com for tickets, deals, and events. A home run for the whole family. Bistro 1907 is a classic yet unique American bistro. This space lets us immerse ourselves in history. The dishes are inspired by our past but have a modern twist. Bistro 1907 by Mark Canzanetta is unlike any place else. Find out why. I'm Mark Canzanetta, and I welcome you to Bistro 1907. Friday night here in Youngstown. Yeah. All right, let's start with the name first. Oaxaca is? Oaxaca is a region in Mexico. It's all the way down the Pacific coast, right next to Guatemala. Okay. So Oaxaca is actually spelled O-A-X-A-C-A, -A -A, mm -hmm. but we figured we'd do a little play on words and we spelled it phonetically, make it a little bit easier for people to pronounce. So okay. Oaxaca, I like it, it's catchy, and it's the culinary capital of Mexico. And why, that's where they, they do a lot of their cooking yeah, there. They they're do, famous for it, right? Uh, they're famous for mole, okay. and they're famous for Mezcal tequila. Okay. And plus, they're just, it's an amazing, beautiful, like, city that has a lot of influences from a lot of cultures. Very good. Yeah. So. Uh, and, and the restaurant in Oaxaca, we may have that before you know. We're it, right? hoping brick and mortar by spring of 2020, right here in downtown Youngstown. That's what I want to ask you. Do we have a location yet? We do have a location. I don't want to say because we haven't, here. it's going to be here. Uh, so okay. I haven't signed the LOI yet, but uh, it, it looks pretty sound for right here in the heart of downtown Youngstown in a classic old building that's going to be brought back from the, the ruins. Oh, Oh, that'll be fun. Yeah, All right, Well, we're standing in front of the Oaxaca food truck. Right? This is. This, this is. is. It. And uh, have you always wanted a food truck? A lot I of have. people do. I've wanted a food truck. You know, okay. I thought it would be like this fun adventure, and you go and you drive around, and like you see it on the movies. Uh -huh. But there's such a lot of hard work that goes behind putting the food truck together. So it's it's fun, but it's a lot of hard work, and it's a little bit warm, especially when it's 90 degrees outside. I, I would think so. And this is going to be at the certain festivals and different places around town. Yeah, right? yeah. You know, and if we have enough advance, because uh, you know, our, our partners, Ovation Events, uh, they we rent this truck from them. It's their truck. So if, as long as I have plenty of advance notice for a date, we can do. We can come to Mike Case's house and do a Oaxaca taco truck party. Wouldn't that be fun? I think that'd be great.
great. So, this is a really fun and interesting menu, and I want you to touch on it real quick before we take a tour. Well, you know, what I love about Oaxaca and what I love about all of Mexico is bright, flavorful ingredients and flavors. They burst just in your mouth when you eat them, all the different textures. And you know, I want to do something a little different than what the Valley has seen. Okay. You know, I want to do like a street version. Like when I, I've been going to Mexico for 30 years. So I want to do like a street version of Mexican food. Like I get there. Do here. people think you're Mexican? They do. Are you Mexican? I am not, not okay. even, I had my DNA test done. <laughs> I am not, not one drop, not one percentage, but I love that country. Uh -huh. That's probably where I'm going to retire when I'm later on in life. Really? Spend a few months months there oh, with my nice. wife Melissa. You want to show us around a little bit? Yeah, I can show you around. I'll follow you. Let's go this way. And We're we'll going to go inside. this way. Well, if you've ever wondered what it's like inside a food truck, now you know. We're inside it, man. <laughs> yeah, we are inside. And uh, this is kind of uh, what we're looking at here for Oaxaca. Kind of close quarters, huh? Fresh ingredients. Fresh ingredients. Seems but like it might get a little steamy on these hot it's gonna nights. Be, it's going to be a little steamy, you know, um, but that's that's the challenge in working and growing yourself as a culinarian like Trayvon over here is doing right now. Uh, he's had some food truck experience before, so uh, and then my sous chef Anthony's back there, so we're just getting, we're loading in right now. The show starts... Oh, gates open up at 7 o'clock, yep. so uh, we're getting the thing ready to rock and roll. What are some of the challenges when you go from doing one kind of food at your restaurant and then all of a sudden starting another kind at the at a, at a food truck? Well, the challenges are just like anything. You want to have an, organiza an organizational plan set up. You want to make sure you're what chefs call meased out. You want to write out a proper game plan. Like I wrote out all the bulk recipes for the staff to follow for all the salsas, all the beefs, all the chickens, and things like that because it's not normal ground beef. We're doing picadillo, which is an a Mexican beef and it has like raisins and Mexican sugar oh, really? and, and carrots and potatoes in it. Okay. And then the achiote chicken we're doing for the burritos and the Oaxaca bowls. Those are all different preparations and special ingredients. So what it does, I think, is it rounds out my staff from a culinary standpoint, presents a challenge. It shows them what it's like to set up in this kind of small environment. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to rock it out tonight, man. We're, we got 4,000 people coming to the show, so we're going to be busy. Do these guys have to do a practice run? Because in a food truck, you got to go quick. It's not like a restaurant we have 15 minutes and a salad comes out right first. right did we have a practice run we did because it was opening night at the amphitheater a couple uh -huh. weeks ago and it wasn't a huge crowd like 2,500 people and people were just walking around and looking at the amazing facility that we have here and so we didn't get hit right out of the gate but once we got hit it was pretty fast-paced and you know I was my man in the burritos and tacos Jesus wherever my Mexican chef Jesus is uh -huh. he was on the flat top just absolutely dying from the heat <laughs> and uh, it was a lot of fun it was a lot of fun Great reception from the guests. You talked about the burritos. Give me some things on the menu that are a little bit different from other restaurants. Well, what we're going to do truck. tonight is, you know, one of the dishes we call Oaxaca nachos just for the name, but it's okay. really in Mexico, they don't have nachos. That's a Tex Mex thing okay. created in Texas. So they have what's called chilaquiles. So we're going to do chilaquiles. And okay. so that's crispy fried tortilla strips dusted with chili lime seasoning. And then we put this wonderful poblano queso over the top of it, cotillo cheese, fresh jalapenos, pico de gallo, pickled red onions. So the, the tortilla are a little crunchy yet a little bit soft and so you get that really authentic flavor of Mexico and that, that sounds good yeah uh, there's this is obviously where the ingredients are the cold this ingredients is the, 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 exactly this is the cold ingredients we're getting set up because the Oaxaca bowls are very very we want to do like you know a healthy bowl that didn't have a tortilla behind it or anything like that okay so we did the bowls and those are popular because it's got our black beans our black borracho beans and it's got cilantro rice and then it's got some cabbage and then the salsas and then you can either get achiote chicken or picadillo beef on top of them and then to the left of that what do we have? We have that's where all the here? fun or is. That's the hot onion. station. That's oven where the oven, oven is. You know, yeah. we'll be doing our, you know, you know, we're doing a little bit different version because we don't have a grill on this truck. So our elote or the Mexican corn, uh -huh. uh, we're deep frying it, which is actually a cool kind of twist. Come because, on, really? Yeah, because it kind of tastes like popcorn, but with all those amazing, you know, we dip it in mayonnaise afterwards, uh -huh. dust it with chili lime dust, and we put the ancho chili aioli, papita, cilantro, uh, and the cotilla cheese. It's just powerful flavors. Wow. How about that? All right. It should be good. Manageable prices. Right? Manageable prices, yes, they are manageable prices. I mean, um, for it, it's an upscale version of Mexican food, but at reasonable prices. Okay. Um, we are getting ready to go on us. When we come back in the next segment, tell some folks what you're going to make. Are we going to do the nachos? I think we're going to do the, the, the right. Mexican, the Oaxacan nachos, definitely. I mean, we'll, we'll do it in a lote just to have it again, but I think we're going to do a couple of the bowls, and we're going to kind of have street tacos, Mike. you got to do it. We're going to do some Mexican street tacos. All right, if you're at the amphitheater, uh, Trey, we're going to put you to work in a couple minutes, okay? <laughs> 
here at the amphitheater, we're on a hill to the right, okay, tonight's location. Look for the black truck, look for the Oaxaca skull, and he will be here on August 2nd for Brent Eldridge. They'll be here for Hall & Oates on the 21st. That's at Cavelli Center. Oh, it is, good. And then Steely Dan on the 27th, and then back here in September for Rob Thomas. For Rob Thomas to, to, to close out the season here. Get but ready. then we have a big one maybe possibly over at Stambaugh Stadium. Perhaps. Perhaps. Right? We'll see how it goes. Get ready to eat. We'll be back at Pesto's Test Kitchen on the road in just a bit. Well, that was interesting. <laughs> and as Youngstown goes, of course, the skies open up on us while we were taping it. That's but, okay. Uh, no, it's all right. As That's, long as you're eating tacos. And I did sneak a couple of bites in Did there. you? Yeah, like, you know, they had the chili con queso just sitting there. So I may have had a little bit of that. But wait till you see the next segment. The segment, they're going to make some really good stuff. I can't wait for it. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, after the break, from the truck to the boat. Yes, we're going to go out on the boat, and this time it's called uh, Lifestyle Living on, you know, on the Lake with Kelly Warren and our Home Advantage segment. This really is an advantage. Be right back. It's great. <laughs> With taking the kids to soccer practice, piano lessons, and everything else, I'm lucky if I get to fit in a workout. But staying fit is important, not just your body, but your teeth as well. The professionals at Pristine Dental provide affordable dental care for your entire family. From routine cleanings to cosmetic dentistry, Pristine Dental has got you covered. Plus, they have transparent pricing and membership plans that directly benefit you, not the big insurance companies. Visit pristinedentalpros.com to learn more and book your free consultation today. Your smile will say it all. The Avalon Athletic Club at Boardman is the perfect place for the whole family to shape up and get moving. This is your chance to play top tier tennis 12 months a year. Plus, take advantage of Avalon's newest state-of-the-art fitness facility and relax in our steam and sauna rooms. Your family deserves to train with the best equipment and the best facilities. And with our Avalon membership, you'll have access to all four of our world-class locations. Call us today for affordable membership pricing and... The best is really yet to come in 2019. Boom, boom, Mancini! Hey, Mike, I think that sounds better and better every time, man. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ray Mancini. Welcome to another round of the Boom Boom Room. Hey, here was my ace corner man, cut man. My case, no further ado. Jim Trestle, Ed O'Neill, who's Drennan, Ryan Florio. I kick your ass, man. I kick the ass. I kick the crap out of you. This is some deep shite, man. Deep <laughs> shite. Ow! Am I the only one? Well, more than anything, we gotta be entertaining, man. We gotta be entertaining. If it ain't entertaining, why are we doing it? That's smooth. Yeah. All of us start college with the best intentions, but sometimes life just happens. Your car needs to be replaced, you start a family, or you simply run out of cash. It may seem like an impossibility to finish your degree now, but your school can help. I'm an accountant major. It was a good thing that I did it. I, got, I jumped over that hurdle. There's nothing to be afraid of. Your old college credits don't expire. Check with your school to see how you can complete your degree. Welcome to the lake. This is what this is what they Here made it for. They made it for lakeside living. Look at this great day we've got. Look at this great team. I love it. Family, friends. I like this, Kel. Yep. Lake Milton. People that buy a lakefront home, good for them, right? Yes. Yes, we're on Lake Milton today, but in Mahoning, Trumbull, Columbiana County, even all of Northeast Ohio, we have so many great lakes and bodies of water. So it's perfect for people who you know, if you want the view of the water from home or if you want to enjoy all the water activities. Well, I was going to say, this is, boating is obviously an activity yes. that you can do 
here on Lake Milton, but I would imagine being able to have this kind of property with your own deck and your own boat and, yep. you know, inviting all your friends to come hang out with you doesn't come at a small price, does it? Well, you know, they start at the prices of lakefront cabins and cottages right. and things like that, and they go up, and you don't necessarily have to be lakefront all the time. You can always, you know, be a row or two back and be able to drive down to the lake. Mm -hmm. um, the important thing, if, if you're wanting to enjoy the waterfront living and something that adds value is do you have dock rights? Right. And so that's a really, that's, a, that's an important question. And if you do, do you have to take care of all of this out yes. here? This so, is all of our responsibility. Right. Okay. Right. It's state property where the dock is, but you maintain your own dock. Very, very good stuff. What do you, this is a, this is a special boat for you, isn't it? Yes. Yes. It's my parents. It's your family boat. Yeah. My gosh. I like this family. I think I'm going to be a part of the Kelly <laughs> Warren and family and associates. <laughs> no, I was going to say, she's helped my mom out a big, in a big, big way, and we're just glad to have you guys all here with us. So tell everybody at home if they're looking at any kind of lakefront property and any questions, comments, concerns. There's a lot of questions I would call, I would imagine that would come with something like this, right? Yes. They can get a hold of you. We have sold a ton of lakefront properties and lake living properties. So if it is something that you are interested in buying or if you've got one that you need to sell, of course you want to call the experts and you can get a hold of us at 330-717-2689, call or text, or online at kellysoldit.com. Very good. Do you, how about we take this thing out? What do you think, everybody? Let's go. You drive it? Ready, ready? Yeah, no. <laughs> no, I, I should not be trusted like that, that's for sure. All right, Kel, thank you. Thank you. Beautiful day. All wow. Right. And as you know, their team, they can answer almost every question. If they don't, they will figure it out. So if you're buying a lake property, Michael, uh -huh. I know that you're in the market for one. Well, <laughs> not yet, but perhaps. <laughs> Maybe someday, right? It really is relaxing, though. Yes, it was. Like, you don't know how until you're like, whoa. And you just feel This is it. all right. And thanks to her parents for letting us use their boat. Very nice boat. Very nice. That was nice. wonderful. All right, do you believe... I do. Do you? I kind of do. You're not the only one. Okay. Uh, imagine uh, being put right into the middle of a UFO controversy. That's what happened to a Dayton man one time when he was sent to work at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. Well, he learned as much as he could, then he wrote a book, now he has two. So let's tell you this interesting story about the great beyond. Back in 1973, uh, my mentor uh, took me on a walk in one of our buildings and he said, have you heard about our aliens? That was back when a fresh-faced college student named Ray Shemansky first got hired by the U.S. Department of Defense and assigned to work at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton. Ray was a senior scientist and engineer for 40 years, but that first conversation stuck with him. So as the years went by, uh, my curiosity just kept getting ramped up. I continued to hear the stories, and eventually I said, you know, I'm going to research this thing. So he did. Ray visited the sites and the witnesses from three of the most high-profile alien sightings, Exeter in New Hampshire, Rendlesham Forest in England, and a so-called abduction in Arizona. But as a scientist, he went about it a little bit differently. And I wanted to re-examine each case, everything that was written about it, if I could talk to the witnesses personally, I'd just try to poke a hole in their story. And if I could, I could go, there's nothing to this alien thing. I'm going home. I'm going to play golf. However, when he did his research, that's not what happened. My attempt to poke holes in these famous stories was exactly the opposite. I found new evidence. I got extra information. And that's part of the stuff that I published in my very first book. Book number one, Fifty Shades of Greys, has been out since 2016. I think the fact that I worked 40 years at the legendary Wright-Patterson Air Force Base and all of its connections, you know, for the since 1947 with UFOs, it really got me instantaneous recognition in the in the UFO community, and the fact that four world-class UFO researchers endorsed my book and writing. And if you flip on the back cover. Their endorsements are listed there. The second book is called Victoria's Secret Truth, which is about a lady Ray met from Colorado. Victoria says she's been abducted multiple times and has actually been used to procreate. Much of the evidence in this case has surfaced after top researchers put her under hypnosis. Her subconscious mind could recall the details. And you can actually see the physical uh, concern on her face as she's talking through or she's reliving the episodes. And 
They're all consistent with each other about the experiences that she had. Don't believe it? Ray says that's okay. But the people that do hear him talk almost always agree. I have uh, what you would know as, as street cred. I have, um, I spent 40 years as a senior scientist for the Department of Defense, and they're not prone to hiring lunatics. I tell people, this is my quest. It's only for me. And if I have interesting information to share, I'm gonna share it. But I'm not out to change anyone's beliefs. I'm not here to rant against the government because they're not releasing it. I don't have an agenda. I, I'm having fun with this and I'm meeting great people, but it's my story. And if you want to hear it, fine. If you don't want to hear it, turn the channel. Michael, all of the things. Like when he he came to um, Ray Mancini's podcast. Right, that's why he was able to be here in our area. Very, and very cool to have when him. When he talks about certain things, like the hair on the back of my neck literally stands up. Right, that's what I mean. Isn't like, it weird? And it's almost like you don't want to hear it, but then you want to hear all of it. You know what I mean? I want to hear about the sightings. <laughs> I hate the abduction part. It it scares me to no end. And uh, there are locked. You know. We can lock the doors here in the studio. Okay, <laughs> they can't we'll get keep in. you safe. They can't get through the glass. The little green men can just look through <laughs> and just knock on the window. Well, for they're you. gray. Fifty Shades of Gray. That's <laughs> yes. that's how you know. So thank you, Ray, for coming up. And um, wow, we look forward to meeting with him again. I hope. Good job, guys. All right, Youngstown. It's a small town. It is. I mean, it's a city, but it's a small town. And when word gets around, boy, does it get around, yes, right? Yes, it does. And that's what's <laughs> happened to a local restaurant. Our perfectly plated segment today talks about Aquapasso, whose uh, word is getting out, and people are loving this restaurant. Executive chef Stephen Bernier can't help but make your mouth water. He's cooking with fresh pasta and the sauces from Giarusa. This is a tomato basil. He and his staff at Aquapazzo are cooking Italian food the authentic Italian way. The brainchild of owner Tom Zyden. I fell in love with the way the Italians embraced, uh, embraced uh, food and they would, um, everything was so fresh. Mm -hmm. And that's what I wanted to do here, cooking pastas fresh to order um, the way they do it in Italy. My first trip was to Parma, and I had, you know, uh, fresh mozzarella with prosciutto and tortellinis made with parmigiano and prosciutto, and I had spaghetti, filetto di pomodoro for the first time, and all these classic dishes that I had, I was just blown away. So that's what they bring to the table. However, when this space first opened, it wasn't a restaurant at all. It was meant to teach and enjoy. And I said, why don't we do a cooking school? And everybody liked the idea and we got it started and uh, it did really well. Eventually a restaurant evolved. First, the CA, or Culinary Arts Restaurant, then Aquapazzo, which is Italian for? Crazy water. Yeah. <laughs> but there's nothing crazy about their success. Even though it's tucked away on McClurg Road in Boardman, on a street that's not really known for restaurants. They're finding us. Yeah. It's really been through word of mouth. You know, our business is up double digits over last year, which, you know, thank God that that's uh, happened. Uh, it's been good for everybody here. Why so successful? Well, Tom says it's a simple formula. I think it's all about the people here. I got great uh, staff, uh, Steve who heads up the cooking here. Uh, the, wait, the wait staff is absolutely fantastic. And then the food. So if you check our ratings on Open Table, I mean, we've been a consistent 4.7, which is really, really hard to do. And Aquapazzo continues to evolve. This year, they redid the patio. We put the canopy over it uh, with the trellis uh, so that people can enjoy it if it happens to rain in Youngstown also. Which, once in a while. Which happens once in a while, yes. Meanwhile, the inside has the kitchen on full display. But if you want a little privacy, you should book the Steel Light Room, named after the company that provides the plates that make the dishes look so great. Third great partner. Uh, their dishware really holds up longer than anything else that we've used in the past. Uh, it's beautiful. They have a lot of great contemporary designs that we can use. Anytime we need something, they're here. They take care of us. And Aquapazzo took care of me. 
A little pasta for breakfast isn't so bad. After tomato basil, I tried this zucchini pasta dish, and then the chef's favorite. This we just call mushroom pasta. That's it? Yep. Nothing fancy about it, just, we're just looking for originality. But it's your favorite? It is my favorite. And nothing fancy about good old fashioned results. So good, you might see another Aquapazzo in the next year. So does Tom have more surprises in the works? I do. I'll keep that secret, you know but it's coming. <laughs> it Soon? might be another year. Okay. Might be next year. Yeah. So some good things to come. Well, as for the surprise, I wish I knew what it was. I'm not a good reporter like Lauren is. She would have got it out of the guy. I still don't know. I spent another hour with him. I still couldn't get it out. I don't think I would have gotten it out of him, but <laughs> it's a great restaurant. Uh -huh. And, you know, we, we have been there many times over the years, mm -hmm. and it's just good to see them growing and evolving and new things. Yeah, and if you haven't been there, a good night to go is that Tuesday pasta night. Yes. And, uh, it's $10 pasta night, something yeah. like that. and you so. can't go wrong. And then you could try their wine. They have this huge wine room. It's amazing. It so, really is. Good restaurant. And good people. So. Well done. All right, when we come back, another good person that has a good restaurant, <laughs> Mark Canzanetta. that again. Yeah. <laughs> My goodness. Back inside the food truck we go. Yes, we are. And then we're going to make some uh, some outstanding Mexican food. A little bit of a higher, like a gourmet look type okay. of uh, Mexican food, but at inexpensive prices. Can't wait to try this. All right, Oaxaca, Oaxaca. when we come back. <laughs> where did my Mimo go? Mimo, Mimo, where are you? Hey, hey, I'm so glad you're here. Wait till you see my Mimo. Your Mimo? Do you make your grandmother mow your grass? Not my Mima, not my grandma, my Mimo! Why didn't you say so? Yeah, yeah, it mows my grass, and I just get to watch, and my humans, they love it too! Get your Mimo by Honda at Ducat Sales and Service. Even your Mima will be impressed with your lawn. Sweeney Chevrolet Buick GMC is teaming up with Bali Spotlight. Hey, you guys, this is going to be great. It sure is. We are bringing you the chance to win big in a Sweeney Cash car. You could drive away with $250 cash or $1,000 towards your new Sweeney vehicle. So buckle up, answer our trivia questions, and win. Enter at valleyspotlight.com slash cash car for all the details. So come take a ride in the cash car at Sweeney Chevrolet Buick GMC. On Market Street in Boardman. Sweeney. Hit your next group event out of the park with the Mahoning Valley Scrappers. From corporate picnics to little leagues and family parties, making an event to remember at Eastwood Field. For bookings and more, visit mbscrappers.com. Hey, guys! I got the pizza. We're always early. Where's, Where's the, the van? van? What time does this thing start anyway? It starts the end of May till early September. The only place to be, River Rock at the end, every Saturday night. Summer is heating up and so are the styles and savings at Ryer Shoe Store. The summer clearance is happening now. Selected styles are 20 to 75% off. Beat the heat and step into Ryer's. You can't afford to miss out on these hot deals. No matter where your summer plans take you, Ryer's will help you put your best foot forward. And at 20 to 75% off, the perfect pair is waiting for you. Get to Ryer's now in beautiful downtown Sharon. Kitchen on the road this week in the Oaxaca food truck. We told you about it in the last half hour, but if you're just uh, tuning in, we're going to do some of the menu for the concerts and uh, different events where you're going to be. And Mark is with me, and he gets nervous when I hold the knife. <laughs> That's that okay. That is a knife. That my is man. a nice knife. It's the newest knife from my friend Guy Fietti. Just came out with uh, Ergo Chef. Uh, made this knife, and with him, they designed it, and I just got it today in the mail. And I'm very excited to use it. Oh, okay. But anyways, we're going to start off. Mike, you like nachos? I love nachos. We go way back in yeah. our nacho career together, even though we worked for Chi Chi's yeah. at different stores. Uh -huh. This is the beauty of working a food truck. You don't know when things are going to fall down on you. That's true. So we got our great chili lime dusted nachos, okay. okay? Or tortilla chips. We're gonna come over here, and like I said, this is more like chilaquiles because they're gonna get wet and they're gonna they're gonna get a little bit soft. So we're gonna douse this in some beautiful poblano queso, okay? So then we're gonna come over here after the poblano queso, and we're gonna put some pico de gallo because you have to have pico de gallo. Right. Pico de gallo, you know, it's got uh, onions and tomatoes and cilantro, a little bit of serrano chili, a little bit of lime juice, just really bright, flavorful. We're gonna add a little bit of cotilla cheese. 
spice, a little bit salty. It's kind of like the Mexican feta. Okay. Okay. And then we're gonna come over here. We're gonna put some cilantro because that always makes that bright, fresh, citrusy flavor. Some scallions. We're gonna break up that flavors and add some kick with some pickled red onions. And that is just takes it to another level right there. Mm -hmm. And then of course, see like right. me, we're gonna kick it up with a little bit of jalapeno, a little bit of aioli on top of that, a little bit of cremo uh -huh. with a little ancho chili, and that's some nachos right there, Mike. Oh, that is perfect for sharing. Yeah, it's it? perfect for sharing. Grab now, a fork you know, for this one. Grab a fork for this one because we wanted to do something that was easy for people at this, the concert venue to come around and eat out of a bowl. Okay. So we're gonna start over here. We have some borracho beans. These are our Mexican black beans. Uh -huh. We're gonna take some cilantro rice. And you can do this veggie if you wanted to, you, right? You you know, we're we're, we're, we're vegan anything. right now. Okay, we're vegan good. right now. So the only thing you would have to say is, and we did a lot of that, and we're actually going to start playing around with something called jackfruit. And oh. we're going to start doing some jackfruit tacos. I've and heard of that. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So now we're going to come over here, and I'm going to put some, uh, I think I'm going to go the achote chicken on top of this. Mm -hmm. Could you get beef if you wanted to? You could to, get or beef this? or chicken. Okay. Okay. And then I'm going to put some pineapple serrano salsa. Okay. Oh, that looks so good. Right? Some Just more scallions. Some nachos in the way. Some cilantro. We got to hit it with a little bit of that crema again. And that's our bowl. That's our bowl. This is two of what, 12, 13, 14 items exactly. on this menu? Two of 12. Two I think of 12. That's, it sounds good. Yeah. And then what will it's we like do? It's like the Borg on, the on next Star one. Trek. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what are we going to do on the next one? We're going to do some elote okay. and we're going to do some, we're going to do a burrito. Because we're going to put something different in a burrito. We're going to put some chicharrones in there. It's going to, you know, those are fried pork rinds. It's going to add a lot of crunch, a lot of texture, and a lot of flavor. All right, back here in the Oaxaca food truck. If you come to a concert here at the Amp, they're kind of on the right side, up on top of the hill, and you can get in and get out and get your stuff, get back to your seat, get forks and napkins. That's right? it, forks and napkins. Be right back after this. Hey guys, I got the pizza. We're always early. Where's, Where's the, the band? band? What time does this thing start anyway? It starts the end of May till early September. The only place to be, River Rock at the end, every Saturday night. Water? Call A to Z Dependable Services. Our fully stocked rapid response water heater specialist will get you back in hot water in no time. A to Z is the only call you need to make. Only A to Z Hi, I'm Barbara Corcoran. Are you thinking of selling your home but you're not sure which agent to hire? You have a lot of choices, but really, the choice is simple. Because there's only one agent I would trust to sell my home. Go to kellysoldit.com and check out Kelly Warren's guarantee to sell your home or she will buy it. You can also find out how her marketing system creates demand and sells a home every 48 hours. Go to kellysoldit.com and get your home sold. Hit your next group event out of the park with the Mahoning Valley Scrappers. From corporate picnics to little leagues and family parties, making an event to remember at Eastwood Field. For bookings and more, visit mbscrappers.com. We are back. We just put these together, the nachos and the uh, bro the bowl here in the Oaxaca food truck. And Mark is here. We're going to make some more stuff too, right? We are going to make some more. We're going to uh, make a street burrito. I am a sucker for burritos. Okay, what do you like in your burrito? I, everything except for, I actually, of all this stuff, I like them all. Okay, good. Because yeah. we know there's a list behind well, I know what you don't like. So I that's like okay. And some I don't that's like. That's all right. So we're going to start. You know, in Mexico, they don't use a lot of iceberg lettuce. Okay. They use a lot of thinly shredded cabbage. Okay. So we're going to start off with some thinly shredded cabbage, mm -hmm. some queso. Casero. It's, yes. it's, it's like a very mild Mexican cheese, very soft, melts really nice okay. for quesadillas, things okay. like that. Okay, uh, we're going to go with some picadillo. I love the picadillo. And again, the picadillo is that beef that I was talking about. It's got the carrots, the raisins, the potatoes. It's got a little bit of cinnamon in it, a little bit of Mexican sugar in it. So we're going to kick it up there. Ooh, can well, you hear the rain coming down? I know. This is the fun of a food truck. So yeah, we're going to have some pico de gallo. Uh -huh. And then we're going to have some of that crema again. Okay. And now we're gonna add a little something special that I love to add. All we're right, gonna, so go on about this. This is the chicharrones. I, at first I thought it was cereal. It, it, honestly, <laughs> but it's, it's not cereal. It's not. It's not cereal. It is. It is. So it's fr fried pork rinds. Yeah. So we crush those and up. And why a did we put those in? There? Because it adds a little bit of big time crunch, flavor, texture, okay. all those different things. Okay. Now we're gonna give it a roll, and this is different than the roll we used to do back in the day. Uh -huh. So we're just gonna roll this up. Okay. I'm gonna put it inside my little foil wrap here. Uh -huh. Cut it. 
and then the guest out front can take this and they can put any kind of salsa they want in it out front. We have salsa rojo, salsa verde. Oh, nice. So like they can do that. Salsa bar. They a little salsa bar, and there's the burrito. Doesn't oh, that look good? Cool. Yeah. All right, so, I'll get that one out. I'll slide it over, and yeah. I'll move this over here. So now we're going to go to something we we have done before in the past, but you know it's summertime now. Mm -hmm. You know Ohio, sadly, because we've had some difficulties with the weather as we're doing right now. The corn isn't quite ready, but we got some corn from Southern Ohio. And tell people what you did to the corn before you we put it in. We deep fried there. the corn. We deep fried the corn. And now, if you can believe it or not, we're covering it with mayonnaise. How okay. Long do you deep fry? Just well, it's about sun? three minutes. Oh, okay. About three minutes. Then we're going to cover it with chili lime dust. Uh -huh. Just like that, and that those flavors in the chili lime dust are just big and vibrant. Ancho chili aioli, like that. We're gonna hit it with some cilantro, some toasted patitas, which are pumpkin seeds, uh -huh. some scallion, and a little bit of saltiness with that cotilla cheese. And that is a lote street corn. That is legit. Yeah, that is so good. <laughs> and you need that's a nap triple napkin. That's Don't a triple you napkin. You almost have to do the step back when you eat it because there's right. gonna be some stuff like that eat, falls in front of you. Yeah, you put your legs a little bit wider and then it's okay. It's just like getting a, a big Philly beef sandwich over there in Philadelphia. Same thing. Same or thing. A gyro at the fair and the yeah, juice. Everything is it's beautiful. Down. All right, so which one do you guys do you like the best? Of all these Mark, uh, man, I'm, had I, it, it's tough. I love the elote, but I'll tell you what, the chilaquiles or the or the Oaxacan straight nachos uh -huh. are just so flavorful and full of flavor. I love those, so I'm going to go in for one of these. All right. All right. This is what I'm going to have. Once I find a fork in this food truck of yours, mm. I am going to eat this bowl. Uh, maybe not all of them, but at least half of it anyway. Wow. Well, thank you. Thank oh, you. Let's uh, get folks the uh, the rundown on when you guys are going to be here. Okay? We're going to be here four more times this, okay. this, this We're doing summer. Brett Eldridge, right? Brett Eldridge. Hall & Oates over at the Cavelli Center. Hall & Oates. Uh, Rob the, Thomas. Rob Thomas. And then and um, Steely Dan. And Steely Dan in between the two. But look for good. us because check us out on Facebook, Oaxaca. Yep. And, and the website is up and running, OaxacaTaco.com. Oaxaca is spelled... Not in the uh, Spanish language. We did it like this so that people could understand. <laughs> we did it right? phonetically. Yeah, there you go. So Thanks look for, for us. Everything. Yeah, thank you, man. Pesto's Test Kitchen on the road. Delicious. You lucky guy. That was a good one. That, that was, was a great one. one. And you know what's smart? He's got it so that you take a take a bowl with you. Mm -hmm. You don't have to sit down and need a place to sit because you're at a concert in a right. lawn chair. So you just eat out of the bowl. You watch the concert. It's it's done very well. Plus, just saying the word Oaxaca. Oaxaca's fun. It's fun. Yeah, I like how he spelled it the way that we could say it instead right. of with the phonetically the Spanish. Pronounce the spelling. It Good job, Mark Kids. Would not making our well lives easier all the way around. Yeah. All right. Oh my gosh. You ready to have a drink? I, I am. <laughs> he had a good one. More I might have on. a better one. And as part of our Avalon Living segment, we are able to show you all over these expansive properties. And I get to have one of Michael's favorite drinks with a new twist on it. Well, in the dead of winter, <laughs> us at Avalon, we think about these days. The days when we're out by the pool, right, Melissa? Perfect, can't wait for them. I was gonna say, when everything's closed up and mm -hmm. nobody's out here, we just look forward to the fresh ingredients and a little bit of sun and a great cocktail by the pool. And this Buell pool, I gotta say, for people that have never been out here before, it's like something out of a movie. It is, nowhere like it. There isn't, there isn't, and your cocktails here, I have to say, um, they're fantastic. And any of the bartenders, they oh, yeah. really do know their stuff. And you guys have an extensive menu. We've got one great one for us today, right? Yep, we're gonna do a tropical mule. A little right. twist on the Moscow mule. Twist on the Moscow mule. And I feel like Mike Case is gonna be very sad that he wasn't a part <laughs> of this is. one today. He, he enjoys a good mule from uh -huh. time to time. So a typical mule starts with what? And how are we changing the game today? Typical mule starts with vodka, ginger beer, and lime juice. It was created in the 1940s in Los Angeles. Um, classic drink. Uh, we just change it up with a little bit of tropical ingredients. Um, we're going to use a coconut I'm vodka. I'm going to Lauren Cam over here. Is All that right. okay? Yeah, this absolutely. We're going to use Ciroc's coconut vodka. I like this one because there's a little less sugar in it. Okay. It doesn't, it's not very sweet. It just, the coconut sits in the back of your mouth. It's a nice flavor. We use fresh lime. Uh, we use goose, Gosling's ginger beer. It's my favorite ginger beer. It is a little bit on the sweeter side, so it complements the coconut quite well. See, Ron's really jealous that I have Lauren Cameron. <laughs> I know he is. Wow. Okay, so and this then we is top the ginger with a little beer. fresh pineapple juice. 
Good stuff. All right, show All right. me how to do it. And Let's do it. Normally we have Melissa Canzanetta from Bistro 1907, but this Melissa, whoa. Mm -hmm. I feel like we, we should have like a, a, a Melissa, Melissa off. Yeah, a Melissa off. We could do that. <laughs> Watch out, Melissa. I know, right? Look out, Melissa. I mean you, Melissa. That <laughs> Melissa. We could go on and on. We could. We, we could. really could. All right, so. All right, so just a attention. couple ounces of coconut vodka, okay. fresh lime juice. Nice shot over there. Half a lime. Okay. Oh, look at that. That is fresh right there. Fresh pineapple juice. Squeezed this morning. You don't need to go to Hawaii. You don't need to go to Florida. You don't need to go anywhere. This is. Doesn't get much better than this. She's adding a little bit of ice in these cups. My goodness. Or mugs? What are mm -hmm. they? Copper no. mugs. Copper copper mugs, not cups. Can't have a mule without a copper mug. Okay. Simple, fresh ingredients. You just top with a little bit of ginger beer. That's it. Even I could handle that. Cheers, my dear. Happy cheers. summer. Happy summer. And cheers to Avalon living. This is living. Wow. <laughs> I have to say, the fly flavors are really good. I love how the coconut comes through. Mm. So fresh. Fresh lime juice, delicious. Oh my goodness. <laughs> High five, sister. High five. Perfect. Whew. Yummy. I know. You want to cheers to that one? Oh, yeah. This isn't With quite. This Non-alcoholic flavored water. I don't know what Ron mm. got us today, but cheers to you and cheers to Melissa. It's very good. She's mm. talented. And she's so calm about everything. Right, soothing. I know, I love being around her. And if you're an Avalon member, you know the big party's coming up in August, yep. uh, first week of August. And right now they're doing the Freedom Warrior uh, outing as we're taping, so so many cool things going on at this place. It is, it is a remarkable place, so we're lucky to be here. All right, when we come back, we're gonna stop drinking and go for a drive. <laughs> Does that make sense? I think we've all said that once or twice. Uh, who said we got some folks in the cash car? We do, and I just I love being able to get to know some of our viewers and have them show up and give them big hugs and then give them a lot of money. And we're gonna do that. Yes, we are. And show you a cool uh, vehicle thanks to Sweeney after the break. Let the wedding professionals at Avalon create a bridal experience that will last a lifetime. From your bridal shower to planning your special menu, bachelor and bachelorette parties, relaxing and revitalizing spa services, even your out-of-town guests will be treated to a vacation experience when you choose Avalon. Our four Avalon properties feature the best views and venues. Our Avalon shuttle service makes it easy to take advantage of everything Avalon has to offer. Call us today and fall in love with Avalon. The Hope Center for Arts and Technology, located in Sharon, offers free job training as part of their Medical Assistant Diploma Program. No cost to qualified students. The application deadline is July 31st. Log on to hopecat.org and click Apply Now. Looking for the best doggone deals on shoes or just looking for an excuse to get a new pair? Visit the Rack Room at Ryer Shoe Store. Unbelievable savings on thousands of pairs located in beautiful downtown Sharon. Worth the drive every time. Fetch a new pair of shoes today. Welcome back. We are ready to give away some money. Aren't we? I love giving away money. I think that one of the biggest uh, questions they uh, we ask even before they start is which category they're going to pick. Right. That's not easy because no, that kind of decides how many you're going to get sometimes. And sometimes when the person writing the questions, I, there's really no rhyme or reason as to what's going to come out this time. Oh, you wrote the questions this time? I did. Oh, uh, 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 what were the category choices? Do you remember? Oh, um, pop, like pop culture, yeah. and then I did one about summer. Oh boy, this ought to be good. I know. All right, sit Sweeney back. Cash Car, buckle up. This is going to be a rough <laughs> ride. Okay, just rough. <laughs> Here we go. Sweet. Friends. Oh my gosh, Eric. And, and our new friend, Norma. Hey. Norma. She's. Norma's riding solo. Right. She's riding solo in the cash car, but that's okay. She doesn't. You don't even need any help, Norma, yes. because you no. know what? 
Easy peasy. I came up with the questions this week. Oh, nice job. <laughs> I did. Oh, you did? You research these? I what? did. I really did. I, you'll see how much work they took. I was trying to make it easier on myself because I feel like when I give people hints, I'm not very good at it, Norma, so I didn't want to make it too, too stressful on you. Well, I'm glad to hear that because I can't take the stress. <laughs> <laughs> Norma, tell well, everybody where you're from. I am from uh, Salem, Ohio. Oh, Quaker. Uh, Quaker, yes. And they just had their Super Nats thing the week before. They had them in Campfield. So, That's good stuff. And yeah. you are familiar with the ride that we are riding in right now. I am. I am. I'm leasing uh, a Silverado. Actually, it's going on two and a half years. And it has a fantastic drive. I'll tell you, driving and riding, if you go on a long trip, it's phenomenal. Better than anything I've ever had, and I'm old, so. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so I know. That's not true. I, That's not true. I agree. It really drives so nice. And they do. So, so spacious, true. yes. Yep. Yes. And the satellite radio, we were, um, you know, Little Tootsie Rock. I was going to say, I yeah. was going to let you do that part. You know, you're so much better Speakers at the music are awesome. yes. of the world. Uh, really great ride, though, and huge, huge inside. Look at your femurs. They fit. Perfect summertime vehicle. Let's go. All right, we got a choice between summer trivia, speaking of summertime, Norma, or famous people. Which one would you like to do? Um, summertime or famous people? Yep. All right, let's try... Let's try summertime. Okay, summertime we'll it is. Okay. The first question in the Sweeney Cash Car, which this week is a Silverado. Uh, how many days are in the month of June? There are 30 days in the month of June. Ding, 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 ding. Oh, wow, very good. Did you know that one? No. Oh. <laughs> no, really. If I knew really. it, you I, had I, to know I, it. We are, we've established I'd be the worst I'm ever. so bad at I just at don't retain like useless that. information. No. It tells, my phone tells me Yeah, exactly. To phone tells us exactly what to do at all hours of the day. Okay, question number two. This famous swimmer won eight gold medals at the Beijing Olympics in 2008. I'm looking at his face. Who is he? I'm looking at his face. Come oh. on. I'm looking at his face. He has an interesting face. Yes. He has a giant wingspan, too. Oh, he does. Long arms, long legs. Um, oh. <laughs> Don't do that. Copyrighted? I'm not sure if we can use that. Oh, yeah. Oh, Seven okay. second rule. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Uh, any hints? <laughs> um, it starts with an M. Michael. Do <laughs> I get half a point? Do you want to move on? Yes, please. Okay. All right, we'll move on. We'll come back to that one. If it comes to you, we'll let you go with that one. All right. Question number three. How many colors are in a rainbow? Oh my there are six. Seven. Final answer? Seven. Okay, final answer, and that is great. All right. Thank you. Good adjustment. Seven. All right. Bees use this. This is question number four. Bees use this from flowers to make honey. What do they use? Pollen. Oh. Um. Well, kind of. Well, well, no. Nectar. Yes. Okay. There you go. Okay. Right. I'm like, well, they cross pollinate. I'm thinking, I was, you know, bees, nectar, we though. need to take care of our bees. I keep reading this in the news headlines. Oh, so I was I know. using that to make people aware. Okay. Finally, Eric, this is for you, for your tan face. We use sunscreen to protect us from these kinds of harmful rays from the sun. We use sunscreen to protect us from these kinds of harmful rays from the sun. What kind of rays are we talking about? Oh, I thought you were asking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, no, right, like, no. Right. I'm like, oh. uh, do you, you want to play? <laughs> Did you ever go that blank? It's U uh, yeah. V. Yes. UV. Do you know what they stand for? Uh, ultra violet. Yes. Okay. All right, and we'll go back to our swimming question, 2008. Michael Kor. No, it's not that. That's a purse. Um, his face has a, be has a beard. He has a beard. He has a cute nose. And he's got. What? I'm not even counting. Five, four, three, two, one. 
four questions correct, normal. Two hundred dollars. Awesome this job. Cash all right, all right. It was Michael Phelps. Phelps. I know. Yes. I know. Yes. Two hundred and fifty. Two hundred dollars, though, lady. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Was this worth? The, was this worth the trip? It absolutely is, and I'm gonna donate it to somebody who is in great need of it right now. So we are oh, glad to hear wonderful. that, and we are happy to do that with you. So I'm excited. Good luck, and have a great summer. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Ooh, Michael Phelps. She could see the face. The I way Michael Phelps is going, Coors Light would have been better than Michael Coors. <laughs> in this case. But, you know, great job. That's not easy. No, it's not easy. And she was all by herself. And you can always, you know, pick a friend to come hang out with you in the Sweeney Cash Car. That's true. Just go to our website, valleyspotlight.com, and backslash cash car. You can fill out your, your information there, and then we'll give you a call. Do you want to do more? Do you like making the questions, or would you rather? I like making the questions. Okay. We used to make questions every day I know on we WFMJ did. Today. I remember that. Are right, you want to see something cool? I this is the best part of the show. The long and short of it is T-Mobile uh, teamed up with Little League Baseball and came to my son's Little League practice Dang. with Francisco Lindor of the Cleveland Indians. Then they gave him tickets to the Home Run Derby at the All-Star Game. I wanted to show you a little bit of video. And then the uh, kids got to be either shagging balls in the outfield or they got to stand next to Francisco and wave a on national TV and on the on the main scoreboard at the stadium, and he loved it. I was going to say, I'm not sure who loved it more, you or Mario. I think I did. I, I guarantee I did. because he's a wonderful experience. Yeah, so thanks to T-Mobile and Tomich Little League, and it was just a lot of fun. I guess that's my dad bragging moment right It's okay. There. You're allowed. Yeah, and Hard his team won the districts, dad. and they're off to the state championship. Congratulations, Mario. Good job. And way to go, Dad. All right, everybody's talking about this old person face app. They really are. You take your picture, you send it through the app, it comes out, and it makes you look like you're 98. And what I try to do every day is to look younger. Right. So I'm not sure why people are purposely trying to look older, but what I think the you heck, look let's good. give it a shot. I think you look good. I do it. You look like an older version of your mom. Who is a beautiful lady. She's so wonderful. you want to give this a shot? Yeah, so we All we right. are looking at it, and we'll put it up full screen for you guys. All right, ready? And there, oh. You have to put your head in it. Okay, we'll, right. we'll see what this looks like. And then, um, oh, I don't boy. know, I thought you did okay. <laughs> Did you think so? Yeah. All right. I don't like the way I look. Nobody's going to like the way they look, right? And then we're going to put it up on the screen for you and take a look at this. This is what Michael and Lauren are going to look like when we're like, what, 90? Right. And sitting here probably and doing this program. Probably. Okay. If you let us. All right. Don't forget to watch us on all our different platforms. So many different ways. Of course, if you're um, online, valleyspotlight.com, log on to our Facebook page. We're also on YouTube and Roku. All of the people that partner with us to make this possible, we couldn't do it without them. Our throwback commercial is uh, in honor of Ray and UFOs. There you go. Atari. Out here we entertain ourselves at home. So we got an Atari video game. There's so many different games to play. We especially like Space Invaders. Zapping those little devils from outer space. It's fun. But personally, I think the whole idea of creatures from outer space is a little far-fetched. Other company offers you as many different video game cartridges as Atari. If you like this video, subscribe to Valley Spotlight on YouTube and be sure to click on the notifications bell so you know when we've got some new stuff. You also can like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and subscribe to us on Vimeo or our Roku channel. Me and my boy Matt had it good. He had catnip that was off the hook. But one day, he brings a girl home, and she's allergic to cats. Every sneeze was a nail in my coffin. Now I'm in a shelter. It's decent, but they don't even have Wi-Fi.